transition into our next session. Uh, there are a couple of people wandering around still, but I'm going to introduce our next speakers. Uh, I'm really excited for this presentation after seeing some of their work and some of the things that they talked to me about really quickly just a few minutes ago. So uh, our first presenter, or it's a team, and it's been a team now for, for a number of months, uh, Carlos Conejo, he's a master black belt, and he's brought this new concept, this concept of bringing lean to more of a government agency, or a city in this case. So he, the teacher, is going to come up here and talk with Gian Meta, Meta, Metafogio. And they're going to tell us about their experience and how their student and teacher association is now going to spread to other locations. All right. We're going to start with a cue the video, please. Well, we wanted to be an excellent local government. And when I first arrived, I realized that I was talking a language that nobody else seemed to be sharing with me. Engineers and accounts speak different languages. <laughs> the tradition here is to have a lot of meetings and to do a lot of work in the meetings and very little work outside the meeting. As one manager transferred to another manager over the decades, pretty soon you have these big cumbersome processes that are in place that everybody thinks are the way to do things that nobody has ever questioned. Well, I think the Kaizans actually uh, help break down a lot of walls, and that communication really facilitates coming up with, with new solutions and answers. At the city of Tulare, we're communicating more. We're getting more people involved. As staff understood that they want to serve people and clients, that's what we do for a business, they caught that vision and said, sure, because they have great ideas and for years have been saying, I have great ideas. Now we have a mechanism and a method to get those ideas on the table. People who didn't know each other were all of a sudden working together on a project. People People who didn't know what other parts of the organization did were working together and learning about parts of the organization they didn't even know existed. In the project I'm in now, I'm working out at the wastewater treatment plant. What does law enforcement and wastewater have to do with each other? Really nothing, but uh, I've already developed some relationships there with those folks that I hadn't had an opportunity to work with. Now, when we see each other, we've established that friendship and that, that uh, work relationship is great, and it's just a good thing for the whole city. The issue of we're already doing that, I think uh, to a person in the Public Works Department, they would agree that that organized toolbox is better than the toolbox they had before. I was impressed with it, um, and right away um, I wanted to be involved with it more. I honestly believe that uh, the people that will engage in this process and take it serious and give it a go will have the same response and reaction that I did. All right. So what'd you think? Yeah, good? Got it, citizens, don't we benefit from lean government? Oh, yeah. You bet. So again, if government is lean, if government is more efficient, that means our libraries can stay open on the weekends, right? That means that programs don't have to be canceled, you see? That means that our school district and so forth and so on and so on, you see? So the city of Tulare has been on a three-year uh, journey, and thank you to the city of Tulare for helping out with that video. Also. Thank you to uh, Paul Stamper from the County of Ventura also for helping out. And the county has been on their lean journey since 2008 with their strategic plan. And they've been practicing Lean and Six Sigma for quite some time and are very mature with uh, internal green belts and black belts and so forth. So today we're going to talk about uh, lean government. And we're going to talk about, <clears throat> of course, you know, the seven deadly wastes. But more importantly, I want to talk to you about the difference between Lean and Six Sigma. So Lean takes a look at plucking the seven deadly ways, and actually it's more like 15 or 20. And if you want a copy of, you know, I have slides of the 12 uh, critical office ways and some other things, be happy to send that to you, just give me your card. But uh, Six Sigma takes a look at eliminating variation. Everybody say, variation is the enemy. Variation. Variation is the enemy, folks. But you know, instead of talking about variation, you know, let's give you a demonstration to show you about Six Sigma in action. And so what this, anybody ever seen one of these before? Yeah, okay, so guys, so this is called a quincunx. By the way, the CMC guys, okay, those are my grasshoppers. Okay, they're doing a great job. They're in uh, two years into it, your journey, 
right? Uh, second round the lean, and uh, we have a, a round of leadership going on right now. So what this is, is a quincunx takes a look at five different areas of a process. We take a look at the process itself. We take a look at common cause variation. So common cause variation takes a look at machine, method, materials, process, procedure, metrics. Difference between process and procedure is process are the steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Procedure is those process in writing, hopefully, because we want to go away from tribal knowledge, right? All right, so then we're over here, the black box takes a look at what our process can deliver. So we take a look at the upper control limits and we take a look at the lower control limits. Not as robust or not as tight as the red box, which is what the customer is asking us to deliver, right? And so that's what that shows. And over here, this could be either a process or it could be a machine. And so we don't know our upper and lower control limits because we have not been collecting data. So Six Sigma is about collecting the right kind of data to give us the pulse. So we had you know, people from medicine before. You gotta take your vitals, right? Are you alive? Are you breathing? What's your BP like, you see? So again, same thing with our organizations. We must take the pulse. We must, because we don't know, it's just a shot in the dark. And lean is just the first step. So over here, these are random pulls or random events just happening. And in this case, we see where they're falling. And, and I love this uh, simulator because every time it's like a new experience. You know, it's like, like my memory after 50, like every day is a new experience. Right? <laughs> Meet new friends every day, right? And my family members a lot of times. Just kidding. All right, good, God, I'm pushing, I'll be 59 this year, guys. I'm pushing 60, holy cow. All right, so, so what can you tell me about this process over here? Are we delivering what the customer is asking us for? No, what are we delivering? Okay, off target. And over here, our employees might say, yeah, but you know, most of the time, well, but the customer, does, does the customer want it most of the time? No, all the time, right? And then over here, we don't even know that we're out of spec and we're very much risking, you know, going outside of our lower control limits. Now, over here, what this means over on this side is that we are um, not adding enough value to the process. So the results will be technically what's called in the Six Sigma defectives. We know them as scrap. On this side over here, then we're looking at adding too much value. We're touching it too much, too many steps, too many people, too many handoffs, too many approvals. All right? Uh, <laughs> right? Some places, I mean, I got, I got VP signing time cards. It's like, are you kidding me? I mean, time cards? For reals? Come on. Okay, so we're too much touch. So in this case, we, we rework. All right? So let's take a look at then uh, fixing the process. And by beginning to, uh, you know, start doing some uh, problem solving and we collect the data. And so now we've centered the process. And so now let's take a look at. By the way, oh, there's one outlier there. What do we got there? There you go. Oh, that's a false reading, false reading there. Okay, well, okay, we'll, we'll go with it here. You know, I think children, animals, and quincunxes are the three things we should not be working with. <laughs> All right, let me try it again. There you go. All right, we'll zero it out. There we go. Don't, we'll get an anomaly. There we go. All right. Ah, there we go. Did the process improve? Yeah, you betcha. Okay, so just by centering the process itself. Okay, so it's very important that we know through data collection what our upper and lower control limits of our processes are so that we can deliver to the customer. Okay, so now uh, in this case, we've done some root cause analysis and so forth, and I'm going to skip that step and just go to that. What happened to our dispersion, or what happened to our variation? Did it get wider, or did it get tighter? Okay, so that's more robust. And so again, in a normal distribution, we would see the bell shape curved over here, and in uh, the test for normality, we should see, uh, you know, uh, what, 34, 34, right? 68% of the data within one standard deviation, then 14 and 14, so 97% of the data should be, you know, under the bell curve. And in this case, 
three standard deviations to the right, three standard to the left, there's your Six Sigmas. Okay, so if you didn't know what Six Sigma was, there it is, and that's the Reader's Digest version of Six Sigma in action. Make sense? All right, good. Thank you very much. So, <clears throat> let's take a look at um, using the Demaic system uh, is the standard uh, system uh, or, or DMADV. So Demaic, define, measure, analyze, and proven control. A uh, DMADV, uh, define, measure, analyze, design, verify, and uh, control. Uh, so in this case, we take a look at describing what's the present situation. And um, three toll gates for that is we need to know what customer requirements are. So if you don't know what customer requirements are, you still gotta collect the data. You see, project charter. You gotta get people involved, get the process experts to get on board and um, work as a team. So we have to teach team dynamics. The two things that really mess up a uh, project is poor team dynamics, either people can't get along or everybody just gets along so well, right? been married 50 years, we've never had a fight, right? Is that right, Gina? Right? No, that's not right. 50 years of marriage, you gotta have had some fights, right? Either she's got something going on the side or he's got something going on the side, right? Because 50 years, you, you need that passion, that, those fights for the makeup, right? You see, it's very important. So the same thing with, 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 with teams. You know, you got to have some positive conflict, positive conflict, change, innovation, you know, a new way of doing things, bad conflict, backbiting, backstabbing, throwing people under the bus, right? We don't want bad conflict, we want good conflict. You see? And then that process map, whether it's a value stream map or you guys learned about swim lanes yesterday, again, you got to be able to see that process, the process steps. What's value added? What's not value added? What's the time on that? Then measure. That's your data collection. Basically, what, what are we going to use? What forms? What reports? And then analyze. Analyze that data. You know, 80% of your time should be in data analysis is, is, again, what we say this morning, the speaker said 90%, agree, totally agree. So between 80 and 90%, because you must know what's going on before you come up with solutions. If you even take a look at this process, define, and any, any solutions and define? No. Measure, any solutions there? No, right? So don't give me solutions, but in, I say that nicer, James. I say to people, you know, that's, that's a great solution. Why don't we make that a why question? And so one of the assignments that I get, right? these guys know, Ernie knows, 50 whys, man. I want your 50 whys. Because again, from the 50 whys, we start seeing common cause variation to the smoking gun to special cause variation so that we can you know, find that smoking gun and, and do some more proper root cause analysis. All right, then improve. There's your solutions, thank God. Okay, that's a fun part. And then we get into the control plan. Control plan means not only control plan, but response plan so that we can know how to then put it back in control should it go off of control. So that's why we need to have metrics, dashboards, etc. This is a sample of a um, uh, team charter. And in this case, you know what's the subject, a little background, the targets, uh, maybe the business case. What's the business case, Teresa? The business case is because it's going to reduce our whip. It's going to improve our position in the marketplace. It's going to reduce our whatever, you know, defects. So it's got to be a business case problem statement. One to three sentences that give us the salient points. If you can't say it in one to three sentences, you do not understand the problem statement. Yes, sir? So how does this compare to an A3 that we were talking about? An A3 is, uh, is like a, uh, a status. This is actually a charter to give the team direction so that the team comes up with agreements as to how they're going to approach the problem solving. An A3 can be part of the reporting, but this here sets up the roles, the responsibilities, who's gonna be team leader, who's gonna be co-leader, who's gonna be scribe. You see, so, so again, you gotta have this at the beginning so that, again, we've got form and function. And then this falls within the hierarchy above the team would be the champion, which we call the bulldog that even opens doors within your organization or kicks them down. Because again, I don't want my team leader to have to go up against a department head that says, oh no, we don't have those resources. No, you can't, we're too busy this quarter. Uh-uh, get that champion to go over there and have a come to Jesus talk with that department head and say, look, right? 
this is important for our initiatives, right? So you need to let these guys, you need to let, you know, right now I'm, I'm, I'm at uh, Orly Cosmetics, fingernail polish, and so we, we, you know, I'm trying to get the VP to let go of $150,000, but that $150,000 is going to help us reduce the setup time significantly on the fillers, and this, you know, first year alone is gonna be in the millions, millions, you see, so come on. You know, and, and, and I'm hearing, well, you know, he wants return on investment, blah, 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 blah. It's like, pfft. okay, come on, let's, let's do the math. All right, so that's what the charter does. So the other thing is, uh, in government, we need to get uh, the buy-in from city council or, again, you know, uh, uh, bodies, governing bodies. Uh, and at the city of Tulare, uh, boy, I tell you what, I, we, 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 we got in the hot water by calling it Lean Six Sigma. I mean, we had one city council meeting where the people had signs and pickets and like, storm the castle, you know? And it's like one lady got up and she said, well, I don't know much about this sick Sigma, but, but I'm not for it at all, right? So there's a stigma to Six Sigma. So if you don't have to complicate it, don't complicate it. You know, so finally it was one man that says, well, you know, as far as I can see it, you know, all you guys are trying to do is you're just trying to make the city more efficient. It's like, yes. Whoa, whoa, why didn't you just say so, right? You're using this, you know, $5 words when you should have just used, you know, right? So, so again, you got to keep the concept simple so that, again, people understand and don't feel threatened. And you must recognize staff contributions because, again, the staff always wants to do a good job. And, and, and you can't say, no, they don't know anything. We just say, hey, we just want to springboard from what they already know. But you got to warn people, okay, at first it's going to be topsy-turvy, so you got to, you know, Get in and you know hold on to that roller coaster ride, and this is a this is a 12 month to 24 month commitment. You ready for that ride? Okay, it's an e-ticket ride, because we don't want just incremental change. We want fundamental change. At the city of Tulare, we gained that fundamental change, folks. It's a different city than what it was three years ago. We've got to have a department head kickoff so that you get department heads online. Internal branding campaign, internal communications, communications on the internet. County of Ventura's got their portfolios and everything on the internet so that everybody can access that. Uh, share drive, knowledge base, so that people can understand the nomenclature and so forth. And then you want to tie it to performance, because guess what? You know, Ryan's telling me, and I go, oh, yeah, Ryan, I'm, you know, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm all for it, you know? And all of a sudden, go over here and say, okay, guys, whatever he's saying, forget it. Hey, we're, not, we're doing it my way. You see, so you got to tie it into their performance. Very important. You got to get change agents that are going to drive it as well. We take a look at the leadership level, team level, individual level, a lot of learning, and then the task level to make sure that people get the goals and the objectives done. And you got to keep score, you know, with the metrics. Command and control does, doesn't work. You know, you got to involve the decision makers and change the way that they've been taught in government to run everything and get them to engage themselves and their uh, staff members. Uh, Harvard Business Review and Gallup did a poll uh, a couple of years ago. 70% of US employees are disengaged because we're still practicing 1920s management style. I pay, I say, shut up and do it. Crazy, crazy. Guys, if you really take a look at that, we're at 2015. In five years, that type of management will be 100 years old. I mean, come on, give me a break, all right? So it starts at the top, but it can be driven from the bottom. The executive walkabouts, we also talk about that in government. Very, very important. Benchmarking, going to other cities. Uh, again, County of Ventura was very gracious in sharing best practices with us. Uh, and then metrics must be displayed. Uh, here we have, uh, in this case, happened to be safety and core values as part of somebody's performance reviews. In this case, it happens to be a very small company called Fender Guitars, where I, I uh, redid their lines back in uh, 2003, 2004, both their guitar lines and their amplifier lines. So again, you know, what gets measured gets done. All right, so we have just uh, the other thing that's special with um, uh, cities, municipalities, and agencies is the collective bargaining aspect of it. And some of you guys have unions, some of you guys don't. So in this case, you got to get that union support letter because that also drives the employees and the buy-in. In this case, uh, I can't show you any government type of unions that they didn't allow me to show, but in this case, 
uh, Carpenters Union. Again, Carpenters Union fully endorses any changes that will improve safety and production practices for the members of the Carpenters Union, number 150, and the benefits of any company, city, or municipality, USA. Bam! Okay, because they realize that again, if the cities and municipalities have better employees, then guess what? Retention goes up. And maybe, guess what? When renegotiation time comes around, maybe we can ask for a little bit of money, but because they reduce the cost, we just found the money for it, see? So that's the way that works. All right, so we've got about, it looks like about seven minutes or so. And uh, Johnny? We'll make it happen. There you go. Hello. So I'm, I'm happy to share with you our very first project, a lean project that we did within the Tulare Police Department a couple of years ago. And this was done uh, regarding our driving under the influence, influence process. Okay. So we took that as a, a process that we thought this can be something that can definitely be improved in the way officers do a DUI investigation in the field. And as you can see here, we start obviously with our, our project charter. And we started with obviously defining the current process that we had in place, all the different ways that we had. And obviously, uh, as you can see, it was labor intensive for the officer. It wasn't clearly structured. So pretty much every officer was kind of doing his own way. We didn't have anything that was structured. And so obviously that is a great cause of variation. It requires taking notes in the field, re-enter those notes in our uh, record system and it also required to enter those data twice into the same system because the system wasn't interfacing so we had to enter for example the driver information that we would took from the field into the computer system then we should enter in a new phase of the system and re-enter the driver information so you can imagine how much of waste of time also margin of error just on the typing of the driver information so we did uh, a survey, we were trying to find out which was the main area cause that we could focus on in trying to uh, improve the process. And we sent out a survey to all the patrol officer and all the uh, corporal, all the one who was working investigation. Everybody that had an opportunity to be out there to do a UI investigation was involved in the process. <clears throat> As you can see here, there was a simple Pareto analysis, so we decided to look at that as the point where should we focus our improvement. As you can see, uh, the majority is on the report format. That's where we had the major problem. We have issues in how to write the report, since every officer was kind of doing things differently. Um, the fact that we have to duplicate some of the data, and so we decided to tackle the uh, report format as the first way of improving it. We also use uh, Ishikawa uh, cause and effect diagram here to try to find out, okay, the problem is obviously the time consuming that we have for a DUI investigation, which are the root causes that cause this time consuming. So we try to brainstorm from the main causes that we broke down into uh, the technology, the personnel, the policies, and the procedures that were in place and this is what came out from the survey that we sent out to all the officers. Ideally, uh, that was done from the fiscal year, July 11 till uh, uh, end of June 2012. We had 170 DOI investigation done in the city of Tulare. Not that many, we're not CHP, you know, this is not our priority kind of call, but obviously if somebody drives and is drunk, we take care of business. So we had 176 investigation and uh, we figure that the average cost of an investigation, considering at $31 per hour, roughly what an officer will make, for 195 minutes, that was the average before to an investigation from the very beginning, meaning from the traffic stop until we do all the field sobriety tests. We book the, the guy, we take him to jail, that officer then stop, type the report, the investigation is closed and submitted to the district attorneys for review and prosecution. It was 195 minutes. So on average, it's like $100 per DOI. This is where we started the brainstorming, the improved phase, and what actually came out of it is that we decided to create a DOI form. It's a very simple form that we're using right now. It's a suit two-sided pages, and it's very simple to fill in. You're just starting from page one on the bottom, you go all the way down, you flip the page, you start from the top, and you go all the way down. Most of the fields are made of check boxes. 
and he has all the possible options, you know, driver demeanor. You got at least field sobriety test, test number one, how did he perform? Mark the box. So by the time you are done, you are basically have a completed form, which now is standardized, so every officer uses the same form. When we submit the case to the district attorneys at the, for prosecution, they all receive the same material from the department. They all receive the same form. Officer knows how to do the form. So there's more of a standardization on how we do the business. There's no um, room for error or room for officer to forget to ask a specific question or, you know, here's the advantage that we find out. There was no redundancy in the data entry, first of all, because now what we do is, when we are done with the investigation, we turn in the paper form into records. The paper is scanned into the system, and we're done. So there's no repetition as far as data entry into the system, because all it's done is only done once in the field. It obviously helped the officer to make sure they ask all the pertinent UI questions because, you know, as I said, every officer is different, especially a new officer. They all they have like uh, five days at the police academy as far as a UI investigation. They are not as proficient as an officer has been in the field 20 years. An officer like myself was going to additional UI training, special UI training school. So obviously they don't have that knowledge and so it's very common for them to forget to ask questions. So when they go to court to testify, well, you know, it goes with a defense attorney is going to try to rip them apart. Oh, you forgot to ask this question, so, you know. Oh, did you do this before telling my, ask my client to do a specific field sobriety test? So now they always follow the same format, so there's no room for officers to try to forget things. It's obviously, as I said, also help as far as a conviction rate. You know, most of the time they plead out. We don't have to go to court as often to testify. You know, it is what it is in that paper, so it saves time for us on overtime to go to court as well. Yes, um, here's what it is as far as the improving phase. You know, we were able to reduce the processing time from the original 195 minutes down to 120 minutes. Uh, so basically, on average, the cost of a DUI went down from $100 to $62. And this is a good saving, but you know, as a police department, we're, we're not a profit organization. It's, more, it's not more trying to save money. I mean, obviously we're trying to save money, but the idea is we provide a service. You know, our customer, are the citizen of Tulare, they are taxpayers, you know. So our job is to provide a service and trying to avoid any waste in that money. So by doing this format right here, we found out that we were able to save 220 hours per fiscal year. It's the equivalent of putting an extra police officer five weeks and a half in the street, which is basically already paid. You know, so the public saving enhancement is what basically came out of this project. You know, I don't know you, but as a taxpayer, I'd rather have an officer in an alley, as a bad guy than being sitting in a parking lot typing reports, you know. That's what they're supposed to do, fight crimes. And <clears throat> on the control phase, we obviously tested it on a real scenario after everything was implemented. We were able to break it down, as you can see here at the time, under actually under the 120 that we expected. So we did a complete uh, real investigation in 115 minutes. So what we have now, as I said, you know, all the new officers that are hired and come on board are trained on the specific use of this formula. The format that we have, we have obviously is also a good tool for officers to be retrained because it's, DUI is a perishable skill, you know. I don't know if you've been ever go to court on a DUI trial. Well, it's worse than a murder trial, okay? It, some officers rather do a murder investigation than a DUI investigation just because of the fear of going to testify on a DUI. Okay, so this can give you the opportunity also to officer to be, uh, to learn more about the process and to be more comfortable if and when they go to court and testify. And this actually, the, the, the formula that we invented, the form that we are using has actually been used now for about two years and we are still, it's still working better. The feedback that we have for the officers, obviously we had a little bit of resistance in the very beginning but now that they're starting to use it and they realize, oh, I can make it faster and be done with this investigation, move on to my next case, they're actually all for it. All right, great. Let's give my hand.
and it looks like we're getting the, uh, right? <laughs> Did you have a last, last word or something you want to say? Or? Last words yeah. are that at the city of Tulare, uh, we not only uh, uh, you know, worked on the DUI process, we brought the uh, police recruiting uh, process from 150 days down to 53 days, the uh, police payroll from 40 hours to zero hours now because it gets transferred automatically, the uh, building permits uh, from 120, 190 days down to 30 days, business licenses down to seven days, uh, fleet services, we got great flow, uh, let's see what else, uh, fire, uh, parks. We can mow all the city parks in four days, used to take five days before, uh, so that means that on Fridays we can actually improve the facilities at the parks, paint, plumb, uh, uh, PM, the machinery, uh, whatever else, and so um, they're on fire. We're gonna go around two uh, this May uh, or June, with uh, some other projects, but uh, they've, they've done a great job, guys. Speaking okay. of fire, uh, speaking of fire, we also train all the fire personnel into Link Six Sigma. We set up uh, a curriculum for our eight-hour class, so we had all the fire employees, fire personnel, management, all levels that came through that class. There you go. Other questions? Let's see. One quick question. Uh, with the standardized form that you made for the DUI investigations, were you able to track or notice any quality improvements or changes uh, now that you had a standardized way of filling out uh, the information? Well, the quality improvement from our record system obviously is because we have less um, errors that are done. <clears throat> I think it can pay it off, as I said, from the court case because we don't get that many subpoena to go to testify on a DUI investigation. So basically all the information is there. And so it's pretty hard for a defense attorney trying to, to fight that particular case now that we have all the information collected. There, there's no room for an officer to forget to ask a pertinent question or to forget to do a specific field sobriety test because if you follow along the form, you will hit all the bullets. Okay. All right. Well, so all right. We'll be, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.